good afternoon, or should I say good evening. Uh, welcome to the Sports Bar Show. Chewing the fat and talking balls as we always do every single week on the Sports Bar Show. And I'm back in familiar surroundings, Brent. Yeah, here we are in a uh, nice sunny bake up. Well, it's a lovely uh, winter's day. Uh, night. <laughs> I knew you were getting up to something. You've been lurking around for the last 10 or 15 minutes and you've got that look on your face. Uh, I've got no look on my face. I'm innocent. Believe me. All I can tell you, so go which on. is true, all around us. Snow <laughs> all around us. <laughs> That's not right. Snow is falling. Oh, is that what it all is? All around me. Yeah, shaking Stevens. Uh, well, if it keeps, well, go on, what's if it? If, oh, it keep, if it keeps snowing, I will be shaking. I'll be shaking Peters. <laughs> what's with... I'm, I'm going to ask a silly question, but is this... What's with the uh, the socks on your hands? Hang on, not, what, 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 what are you talking about? Are you <laughs> trying to steal my thunder? I don't know, what I'm, I'm just looking at a, a bloke behind the bar with, with, uh, with socks on his hands. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the truth. Our first topic is to talk about the semi-final of the Carabell yeah, that, that Cup, that Chinese Cup. <laughs> Man United v Man City. Yeah. So... Oh, no. There's somebody at the door. There's somebody at... It's like Pink Windmill in here. I don't understand that. What's We're going to have to keep going. We are live. We're in a sports bar. Well... There you go. But you wanted to know what the situation was, right? Well, it's quite simple, right? Yeah. I'm just taking off somebody. He wears these, but not socks. Right. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think, yeah. Yeah, you follow me? Yeah. It's like give us a clue, innit, with Lionel Blair? <laughs> and on his feet, everybody yeah. else wears football boots. You yeah. know what he wears? Not them, are huh? Carpet slippers. Exactly. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I do because uh, you've been you've not been stopped talking about him for the last few days, and he's got really up your nose, hasn't he? I'll give you an in, uh, an impression, right? He closes down, but he doesn't close down. Yeah. It's a token. Yeah. He gets there and he goes, "Ollie, I'm here." Yeah. He drops back in to share, yeah. and he'll drop back in. And he Ollie, I'm here. Flatters to deceive. Flatters to deceive. He doesn't break sweat. No. It's no wonder he's wearing gloves because yeah. he must be cold because he's not running around. Yeah. If he ran around, he wouldn't need to wear gloves. And he does the hockey corky. One foot in, one foot out. <laughs> he gets the ball and he will always <laughs> opt to go between two players because he thinks he can beat them. Yeah. Because he has got terrific ability when he wants yeah. to turn the ability on. Yeah. But he goes between two players and then what's he do? He should be in a theatre. Is it yeah. Preston Guild Theatre? Yeah. He goes for swan dive. Oh, he goes down. And he's looking at the referee as though to get a penalty. Come on, put us out of suspense. Who are you talking Marcel, about? Martial, what's he like? Michel, Martial. Honestly, <laughs> what the heck's going on at Man U when he gets picked every week? I don't know. A lot of people are looking on social media and <clears throat> there's been a lot of people uh, really getting on it during the during the course of the week on social media. Well, I just don't understand it. I mean, listen. A lot of frustration, I, I think, because the lad has got talent. He's got, he's got loads of talent. Yeah. But, as everybody keeps, we all keep saying it, talent will only get you so far. Mm. You've got to put the work rate in. You've got to put the, you've got to be able to, you know, you've got to challenge. You've got to be up for the fight. And I honestly, firmly believe that when I've been watching him, it's not a one... Listen, anybody can have a, an isolated bad game or not put the, the effort in, but it's back-to-back it's -back games with Martial. Yeah. And if I, if I worry about Ole, look, we all want... True Manchester United supporters want Ole to succeed. Yeah. Is he progressing? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Has he got the nucleus of a very, very good side? Yes, he has. You yeah, don't yeah. want some yeah. fine tuning. But the young kids are coming through. But they're coming through and they're better and better prepared than what they were probably a season ago, yeah. even when Ollie came into the job. But one thing that we're in management, as we all know in management, you've got to be a strong leader. 
And I'm not so sure watching the, when I watched the likes of Martial, I mean, not long ago, it was Pogba. Mm. But to be credit to Pogba, Pogba did put the effort in, yeah. in that game against City, and he did in the previous game. You know, mm. he seems to be a bit of a transformed character. Yeah. But Martial, he's strutting about on the pitch and he's like not putting no effort in. There's nothing coming from him. It's as though, give me the ball and if you give me the ball, I'll try and do a bit of magic. But football's not about just give me the ball, I'll try and do it. You've no. got to work out to get in positions to get on the ball. To and, then then, and then when you him. lose the ball, you've got to get behind, get behind it. it. And I just watch him and, I don't, and he's so frustrating. It was that bad the other night and as bad as it was, I'm screaming at the TV on, on kind of 50 minutes, 55 minutes to get Mason, get him off and get Greenwood on because he was frustrating me that much. Yeah. Now, I didn't say a lot because I thought, am I an isolated case here watching this? But when I watch the social media after, it's <laughs> right. Yeah, it is. Everybody else is seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah. You get the frustrations coming, not just from the player Martial, but also from Ole for not making the decisions. Well, that, 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 it, look, look. We can all be managers. Yeah, of course we, can, we, can. we can't all think what, what Ollie's thinking. Or we don't have but, the, or we don't know what When I see a player, on. and I can tell you what I'd be about, when I see a player that's playing, well, it doesn't matter whether it's Manchester United or whether it's Bake Up Borough, right? If he's got that shirt on and it's a semi final of a major competition, well, it doesn't matter whether it's a semi final or not, but this was a semi final. So if it's the semi final of a major competition and I see a player. Not once, not twice, but several times throughout the game that he's not showing any urgency, and that's the word I'm using. Yeah. I'd be up in that technical area absolutely going mad. Getting on his back, getting on his case. Come on, we need more from you. You're going through the motions. You need more. Now, if Ollie's not prepared to do that and he's not that kind of guy, what's Mickey Phelan doing there? What's his other... Uh, you know, like Carrick, somebody needs to do it. Yeah. It's not like getting away with it. 90 minutes yeah. is a long time. It's an hour and a half football. And he's strutted around like he's in wearing carpet slippers for an hour and a half in a game that's of so much importance. He's wearing gloves. I ain't got a problem wearing gloves, but if you're going to wear it, it's like somebody wearing pink football boots. Yeah. It's not good wearing pink football boots if you're not going to perform. Because right, yeah. you then stand there to get criticised. Yeah. Well, I ain't got a problem wearing gloves. Wear gloves if you want to wear gloves, but they shouldn't do. I mean, that's no. really... But, but for goodness sake... Deliver the goods. Oh, yeah. He was absolutely... Honestly, it was driving me insane. And, but what worries me is, why is he allowed? Why is he still getting picked? I mean, we can't talk about what Ollie's saying to him in the changing rooms, because we're not privy to that. Yeah. We don't know what's happening in the, change, in the changing room. Ollie might be having a right go at it. But... If you've had a right go at him, constructively, and you're picking for the next game, and the same things happen in the next game, yeah. what you've had a go at him constructively yeah. about... There comes a point when you've got to make a, a decision. When you've got to make a decision. And yeah. he's got to... You know, as good as a match winner he can be, yeah. you can't carry it. He's a, he's a luxury. Mm. And in that game, you needed everybody singing from the same song sheet yeah. and working tremendously hard against a very, very talented, good Manchester City team. But yeah. let's be honest, there wasn't a lot between the two sides. It was no. it was a game of chess. Yeah. It was a very, very good game, really. Yeah. But that's, that, for me, Martial, was just, well... And, and what worries me, and this is why, you know, when people go on and say, oh, he's under a lot of pressure, and he, you know, it, it, it's result-driven, and he has to win things now at Manchester United because he'll be in there end of season two, what, just over two year. I get that, but what worries me more than anything is if he doesn't toughen up and, and be more of a, a, a man that, that's going to like a Roy Keane would do. Single-minded attitude. That, that he will... That he will Signal a player out. I'm not saying in public. He doesn't no. need to do that in public. Yeah. But but have a go and and, and tell and expect him. A player and to expect to take ownership and accountability. Yeah. And if he's not going to do that and he still gets picked, I'm only one. But there's seventy thousand, hundred thousand people yeah. thinking the same as me. Yeah. And we need to see. And if they, you know, if Ollie doesn't do that, 
it's going to cost him his, it, it sadly will cost him his job at the end of it yeah. because he needs to do it. Yeah. Because what I but saw... also these players will hang, will hang you out to dry as a manager. Well, they'll well, dry. Yeah. You've not got to allow them to let that happen. But let's be honest, managing millionaires in the modern day... Yeah, he's a, a bloody nightmare. And, and, and managing, you yeah. know, somebody at, at our level of football, it's a yeah. total chalk yeah. and cheese situation. Yeah, at that level, is you've got the player power. You've got the player power. But that doesn't mean to say, if he's got respect for Holly, and Holly's got respect for the player... He should be delivering. Then he should be delivering. And, and he should be able to take... If he knows, he must know himself as a player that I didn't put the shift in that I'm expected to put in wearing that red shirt of Manchester United. Now, if Ole is having a go in private with him and telling him and making him aware of it, he should, he should take that on the chin all day long. Yeah. And then when he goes out the next game... Yeah. He, he owes it to his manager. He owes it to his manager and he gives him a reminder as he's going out. Ole gives him a reminder. Remember what we talked about? Yeah. You know? I want you delivering out there. Yeah, because he's getting the criticism on social media as a manager for, for picking him or keeping him on the pitch. The player needs to deliver to take that pressure off the manager and yeah. do the best he can for Manchester United. Yeah, because in the short time that Greenwood run, I know the different kind of... But Greenwood will make things happen. Yeah. I mean, that game... He's might... a young kid and he's going to run through a brick wall for his manager, isn't he, at well, this moment? Well, well, yeah. But so should Martial. Martial should do exactly the same. I mean, he comes on, he's only been on a few minutes and he, straight away he's, he's, he's committing players. And then he, he, as he's committing players, he sees a player in a better position, so he's giving a, he's giving a little bit of a give and a go. Yeah. You know, we don't see that with Martial. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, but he's stretching. Well, you do see it, but you very see it yeah. very Lacking seldom. Shape, it's yeah. like, yeah, that's 100% right. Yeah. And it's so frustrating at the end of the day. And like I said, I were getting so frustrated 55 minutes. I'm going, get, you've got to get Greenwood off. You've got to get Martial. Yeah. But Martial stays on all the game. Yeah. Now you might turn around, you know, people like Gary. This is what another thing I can't understand. People like Gary Neville. He sat there and he's a, deep down he's a red. And he sat there and he doesn't, he's not, he's not, he's not criticised. He's only to criticise other players of other clubs when... A situation happens like Marsh, what we were talking about with Martial, but he doesn't drop it in with Martial. I don't know, I don't know yeah, why that yeah, is, and yeah. I'm surprised. Mm. Because he should be dropping that in. Because for me, he was a disgrace. Yeah. Uh, you know. And as we were saying, you know, we've flipped through social media over the last uh, few days, and a lot of people staying exactly the same. And the two goals, we've looked at the two goals. Well, that's Both from thing. set pieces. Well, I, I, I come back again. United, under all they seem to be all continually zonal marking. Yeah. Zonal marking. I mean, last season... It's something that you don't... You <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> never. Never do it. You take ownership yeah, in that. Because the players need to take a, be but accountable. You, look, look, it's always been a debate with certain coaches, certain managers. Some will, will swear by zonal marking. Mostly continental managers that are bringing it into the game. Yeah. Some will swear by zonal marking, some won't swear by zonal marking, right? I'm not one that backs zonal marking. You take ownership against your man. Yeah. You have players in position. Now, in, in, in them instances, them goals, like, for instance, the second goal, which was the killer for me, not the first one. Yeah. The first one was bad enough, yeah. but it, you're <laughs> yeah, still well. in the game at 1-0. Yeah. But the longer the game goes on and it's 1-0, right, when they get the second, you've got to find three to win the game, mm. right? And it, and it, so the second one for me, and especially the time it came, was a killer. And even Pep knew that, that and even the City players knew yeah. that. They knew that United that rate, that, that, was, that was a game set match. But if they were man-marking on them, on them set pieces, when that ball goes out to edge of the box, he would have been picked up. Even to have been able to get the shot I, We've seen it back and we've slowed the video down and slowed it down and yeah. slowed it down and we've looked, haven't we? Yeah, there's All nobody the, within five there's yards. Nobody, but yet the spare men in the, right in front of the goalkeeper, the yeah. spare men Well, there, loads of red shirts. Loads of red shirts. But then there's a spare man for Man City at the edge of the box and that ball's come out and he's drilled it back in. So, pretty, but, pretty but if that was man marking, they would, there'd be a man at the edge of the box he picking him up. He wouldn't off. get him. It wouldn't happen. So that, that's again... Yeah. Even on the corner, yeah, the stones has gone in. There's no no mark. Well, the, yeah, it was a free. Yeah, it was oh, free kicks on it. Free, free kick, kick on the first. Free kick. But he's, but he's managed to get in between. He's gone in between. Two defenders. No one's picking him up. Nobody. And he's a tapping. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
It's, it's bad. And that's, you know, and I looked at some of the stats. Last season, United conceded 11 goals from set pieces. Now, I'm not, I'm not being funny. Oli is his own man. I get that. Oli is very, very, very much his own man. Mickey Phelan worked all them years with, with Sir Alex. I'll tell you now, Sir Alex didn't zone on Mark. <laughs> yeah. uh, you were accountable. You were accountable. <laughs> accountable. Yeah. So, what's zone Mark in? Yeah. Zone, as far as I know, all zones are, are, are what's outside that school where you can't park your car. That's a zone, that's an area you can't go in. That's zonal. Yeah. You know, you can't go in that zone. The thing is with the zones, it's a, it's a grey area because you, everyone's pointing fingers. You know, oh, well, I thought you were picking up. Oh, no, you were supposed to pick up. Where it, man marking, when it comes to the debrief at the end of the day after the game, you know straight away, you can go straight to the person. Why well, did he have a free header? Because he right. was your man. Correct. There is no, there's nowhere to go. There's no, exactly. So I, I just think it was, it ended up from a good, a good start. You know, it were kind of, you know, like a game of chess. Yeah. You know, good game of football, good two good sides, but it kind of fizzled away. Fizzled away, and and from a bad, from bad situations like we just talked about. You know, it's sacrilege. Getting get conceding goals off set pieces is sacrilege. In any level, it's mm. sacrilege. And you have to identify why you and it doesn't it doesn't need a pea brain to understand if United conceded eleven goals last season from from uh, set plays, right, and the zonal marking, then they need to just be having a rethink about this zonal marking. It needs to be it needs to be well, it needs to be in the bin. Yeah. Forget it. Coit it, finish it, take ownership. That's what I think. But listen, <laughs> the gaffer, which is the gaffer there, but he's the bacon yeah. gaffer, and probably, the, the, you know what I mean. Well, we are chewing the fat and talking balls, lots of talking points, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about Northwest counties and, uh, well, the current restrictions in place. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Sports Bar Show. Yeah, we are chewing the fat and talking balls. We're just talking about Martial and Manchester United. Moving on now to the North West Counties. The uh, recent news uh, coming out during the uh, the third lockdown now. And, uh, well, we were on the phone talking and texting. And uh, uh, did we say we told you so? Or is it kind of some of that we were expecting? Because you've been saying it for about seven months. It was going to happen, and it's happened. Right. I, 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 need, I need to try and spell this out if I can, because I think people out there don't listen fully what I try to say and what I try and get at. Yeah, they think it's negative. We back, we backtracked to March. We all of a sudden in March, pre-March, me and you and everybody out there had never heard of the word COVID. No. It, and it, Corona was a thing that just. Uh, was behind that bar. bar. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I think you might have some. So what it's saying? You've got your buckets. Uh, well, yeah, we've got some, yeah. That was Corona. That was Corona. That were pre. Back in February and March. Yeah. So that were the only thing. If you talked about Corona, it's here, behind the bar. You follow me? Mm. March kicks in. We, we have a, there's a major, major issue all over the, the country, which transpires it's all over the world. It must have been serious. They're taking the guidance from the from the obviously the science. It must have been serious for us for people to go in a full lockdown, and I mean a full lockdown, even where the Barclays Premiership was stopped, the EFL was stopped, all football was stopped. Yeah. Down at our level, industry didn't go to work, that was stopped, everything was stopped, full lockdown. They introduced furlough measures, right? Which is costing the uh, country a lot of money you know they introduce other measures where to make sure that businesses can survive that they can tap into grants for this and grants for that because it was serious yeah so when there's a situation like that serious and we're still talking about that situation in two more months it will be 12 months yeah when we were talking about it 
And because I listen and take on board and hang on words of what people say that are in the know. Yeah, the scientists. The scientists. I listen to, to them. I mean, a lot of people out there who's listening to Terror Show probably don't. They, they, just, they read the, the Beano yeah. and that's it and take whatever the Beano says, right? But they don't watch the news. They don't take on... They don't watch political programmes. They don't... We did. We did, yeah. It was obvious that there was a major situation out there We've ended up with a, a season where the season stopped in March, creating all the heck of all through the national yeah. league systems where it was nil and voided. Now, at this point, and going through the summer months where we still have this issue, it was also said in the summer months that there was going to be new spikes when the winter months set in. Mm. There was going to be, it was going to happen. This is my point now. My point is this, that leadership is what it says, is people have to take strong leadership. Mm. Now, if we talk about the government, it's immaterial what you voted for, or who you vote for, they're our leaders, and whether we like it or we don't like it, we have to go by what they tell us and what we've got to run by what they say, yeah. because they're in the norm. Now, I know that we, we're not we're getting into politics, that. There's been a letdown from the government when our friend decided to drive and break curfew and go yeah. to uh, up north east and all that for his eyes testing and all that, which was a joke and all that. We understand all that, right? It shouldn't have but strong leadership comes from the top, yeah. right? So when they know, and, and this is not aimed at all the leagues, because all the leagues and the leaders of the leagues will follow like sheep. Yeah. They will not necessarily make decisions that are right decisions. Yeah. They will because they're, they're waiting for someone else waiting. to blink. Correct. That's what always happens. Mm. But the leaders of those groups or the leagues are the football association. Yeah. I've gone on record as saying, and I'll go on record again as saying, the football association in all of this have been irresponsible. Yeah. Irresponsible, because all they've done is try to get, bring back in a football season operating like it would normally operate if there was no COVID around, not understanding, or if they are understanding, not taking on board the implications, you know, yeah. what, what, what were going to happen. Yeah. In my opinion, the leadership should have been where they've gone to the government as a, as a leader of the football association and the, the old shebang, spoke to the science, spoke to the government and said, oh, see, what are we looking at? Is this is going... Because they'll know, they have predictions. Of course. And then what should have been done then? If the government, which I'm sure they would have done, and said, look, we're going to be in some torrid... We're going to be it over the next few months with some... It's going to be rocky. That it's almost, in, <clears throat> that it's almost going to be... Impossible to structure a league season. Yes, right. Because they knew that lockdown two, and then of course lockdown three was on was going to happen. We're going to happen. At that point, the FA could, should, in my opinion, I'm not saying stop football no. because people need football. Yeah. I'm not saying not implement the COVID, you know, like the risk assessments yeah, and we, everything else. We put them in place, but not start a football season that that relies on promotion and relegation. Yeah. Because that, to rely on promotion and relegation, has got to run for nine months yeah. of the year, possibly ten. And in that ten month, you're going to have situations where, for some clubs, it's going to be impossible to, to play. Mm. Some clubs could invest in... In, in the season and wanting because they want promotion yeah. and they invested to, to try and get promotion yeah. I would I would anybody like it if you're fighting against a team that wants promotion and you want promotion and you're neck and neck and all of a sudden you're playing that team and that team has not had any COVID issues they're, they're lucky because we can't control that situation no. so they've not had any COVID issues they've had no COVID issues so they're running at full strength but the team that they're playing, or teams who are competing against them, have all had COVID issues, 
and they come to play them, which is an important game, and you both want to be at full strength against each other, but you're not because you've been on a lockdown situation and you've got players with COVID. Yeah. So you play a game against them, you've got players missing, your best players that can't play, then we've got at full strength. So technically, in that scenario, it's not a level playing, it's not field. A level playing field. And this has all been created by our leaders, which is the Football Association, yeah. Not taking ownership in my eyes. Say the cynic, the cynical person in me would say that by hook or by crook, they will do anything to bulldozer through this season. Well, that's what I think's happening. That's what I think. And it's kind of let's not have any consideration for the little guys. Step foot, step five, step six. It's all about elite football, and the only way they can bulldozer it through. Is making sure that we come along because, of course, it's a knock-on effect, isn't it? It's a knock-on all the way through. So my point being, what should have happened, and this is why we banged the drum right from the outset, when we said the league season, as in a league season, should not have started. No. In my opinion, football, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Everyone needs football. You can play football. You could play in a. You could play in a. Uh, mini, a, a mini, mini tournament you could play in friendlies that you can control but not play in a league situation that has to run over a 9 month, 10 month period where it's, it's promotion and relegation yeah. and by doing and that's why and the financial implications aren't as severe are they? because you're not going into a league season because once you start kicking a ball in a league there's, yeah, there's, there's greater expense there's, there's, there's greater there's, without going into all that yeah there's greater so my point is, should the season have kicked off, when it kicked off, knowing that we were going to come into winter months where we already have problems under normal playing surf, uh, uh, with, with, with the weather, obviously, with snow and ice at the minute, um, you know, you have, you, you know you, you've already got that to contend, but now you've got an extra situation to, con to contend with, is, is that clubs every week are going down yeah. with COVID. Yeah. And we can't control well, we and, had the, and, we had the situation on the first game of the season. First game, which was nothing to do with us. Yeah. We couldn't play the first match because our yeah. opponents had a problem, yeah. which they had COVID. And then we had another problem later on. And then we had another problem. And then we've had our own problem. Yeah. So there's been... So it's going to be to and fro in all, all, all season. All season. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's just a crazy situation. And what will yeah. happen, because you've got a to and fro and then, then you're in a situation where... The FA or the leagues can't control when the government are going to do. Yeah. And then what happens is they've made the decision, well, we'll start the season in October, um, we'll run the season, then all of a sudden the government, and the, which we can't control, lockdown again. So there's a lockdown, right? So, yeah. you, so you're all stopped, right? So it delays again. And then you've got, we start playing again, you'll play for a few weeks again, or oh, it's running out of control, lockdown again. Yeah. And this is the way it's going. So my point being, irresponsible, have the FA been irresponsible in not t being responsible in sitting down with the, not asking these subcommittees to sit down no. with the with a, uh, DC, whatever it is, the uh, culture no. minister, not asking them. Sit down with the powers that be. Sit down with the powers that be and get the full facts and you you know and under the circumstances if it meant missing a season of promotion relegation so be it you yeah. can still play football we're not in promotion relegation the I fact of the matter is now we will end up in a situation we're on lockdown but because we started they'll now try to find ways of finishing the season, but it'll be a watered down season. There'll be all sorts of crazy things it's going to get promoted. You mean like playing one one game? Oh, well, that's, <laughs> well that, that were muted, you know. <laughs> playing with you play the opposition once. So hang on. So there's there's a, there's a load of teams in our in, in various leagues. The yeah. top northeast counties have got no. four three G surfaces. Yeah. So if you if you fix you just happens that you play away. You've not got them at home, no. and they've got a distinct advantage yeah. because they play on a three G. Yeah. You, you know where I'm coming from? So it's from? not a clear it's, picture. It's, like, it's all watered down, but what I'm trying to say is, yeah. should we have been in this position? No, somebody should have had the uh, the leadership qualities, the balls, to be able to stand up and be counted and say, listen, 
we ain't going to do this season because it's not going to be fair on the clubs and it's going to, uh, exactly. it's all going to end in tears anyway. Exactly. And what these leagues are doing, I've said it on record before about the North West Counties League. I think they've been excellent in the way that they've conducted and have taken the lead in difficult circumstances. But it shouldn't be down to the leagues. No. Because what's going to end up happening now, because it's down to the leagues, the FA will just let the leagues... Well, figure it out yourself however you want to do it. Yeah, they'll wash your hands and, and then what they'll do, they'll come up with some thinking absolutely ridiculous situation, will the leagues, yeah. to, to, to try and pacify well, they have, the FA. Well, they have their hands tied, and they? yeah. they've been forced into a situation they didn't want to be yeah. forced so, into. So, so, so they'll come out with some stupid situation that's going to involve promotion and relegation over a Mickey Mouse yeah. uh, scenario, mm. when really... The people at the top, the FA should have gone, boop, yeah. it's not happening. Yeah, but they'll, like, like all things, they'll just uh, pass the book. It makes me wonder what these people are paid for. Uh, seriously. Crazy. Uh, seriously. But it, I, I've always said it, if it's not right at the top, it won't no. be right at the bottom. No. And the only people who seem to be uh, suffering are the clubs like ourselves in the non-league structure who are finding it difficult at the moment. Yeah. So... Uh, lots more talking points here on the Sports Bar Show. Chewing the fat and talking balls. We take a short break and we'll be back again. Well, hello, welcome back to the Sports Bar Show. Yes, we are chewing the fat and talking balls. YouTube, Twitter and on the Facebook page as well. And if you'd like to get involved or uh, got a few talking points that you'd like to uh, like us to discuss on future shows, just drop us a line and get in touch. Leave a message on our uh, Twitter feed and our Facebook pe uh, feed and we'll uh, get, back in, uh, get back in touch with you. Uh, we're going to chat now, Brent, uh, some great news uh, in midweek. Matty James, Bake Up Lad, uh, a big part of Bake Up Borough Football Club. We're very proud of him here at Bake Up. Uh, he's made the move from Barnsley to to Coventry. Yeah, well, well, as you know, Matt is uh, Matt is under contract at, at Leicester City. Yeah, uh, and he's um, he, you know he was a part of the uh, Leicester City team that that won the championship, got promoted into the Premiership. Um, when they got into the just before they got into the. Um, it, well, they're in the Premiership, and the, the season before they they actually won the Premiership. I think at the last game of that season, I don't know what year it was. I can't remember now. Um, but the last game of that season, he suffered a a, a really. I was at the game actually at, at King Power. It was against Southampton, and he suffered a horrific uh, ACL injury, and it was innocuous. I mean, it, it was just two players coming together. It was just just. It can happen. It was nobody's fault, but from that situation, Matt has had a really, really difficult time, as you can imagine, because the season following that, when he's in in the gym and recover, trying to recover and get back on track and everything, the 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 Leicester team are flying at the top of the Premier League, and the, you know, out of anybody's wildest dreams, they eventually win the Premier League. Um, so you can imagine how difficult it was for him, not just physically because he's trying to get back to fitness but mentally you know unless yeah. you've been in that position you, you don't know these things no. uh, and it's been a very very difficult time but he's worked hard he's you know there's been a lot of people and I've got to say this I mean me being because I'm close to Matty I know for a stand that Leicester City Football Club have been absolutely fantastic you know all the way through it yeah. you know it makes you, you know, I mean, it's not a club that, you, as you know, my allegiance is in Man United, and, you know, but I'm a football person. Yeah. And when you know the, uh, you know, the club, I mean, uh, yeah. I've gone on record before about saying until you, you're actually there first hand and you see what Leicester City's about. But it does seem like Brendan Rodgers is... Uh... Well, even before Brendan, that, I'm talking Leicester as a club. Yeah. A club. Managers and custodians will be here today, gone tomorrow. Brendan's doing all right with them. They're not a problem. Mm -hmm. But as a club, they've really, really looked after Matty, he, you follow the logic there. And he's, he's he, you know, the lad's worked hard, he's, he's got back up, but as it is in modern day football, you need to go out and get game. I mean, a few a couple of seasons back when uh, Paul Eckingbottom uh, was the manager at Barnsley, 
he took Matty on loan and uh, loved him, loved him. He's, you know, everything about him, he was a different class. And, uh, and he went there on loan under Paul Egamond and the fans loved him. Yeah. You know, I've, I mean, I'm watching the, uh, you know, social media posts, everything. They could yeah. see a player when they could see a player. Well, just to interrupt you there, I was just reading something from the Coventry Telegraph online here, Brent, and uh, talking about the move from Barnsley. And now I know that, you know, Barnsley were keen for him to, to stay. It's, it's come out the manager, he wanted to bleed and bring some of this young talent through. But the manager's come out and said, Ishmael uh, couldn't speak more highly of James, added, Matty has made a great job with his skills and his experience. He tried to implement his principles on the pitch quickly and it was a pleasure to work with him. I'm delighted that uh, we helped him to come back into his old form. So, as you said, Barnsley uh, couldn't speak any highly oh, of Matty yeah, James. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what he did with them young lads on the pitch... He galvanized that was they, were, great. they were second bottom, and I think. When, said, yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Because they were second bottom when he went in at, uh, at Barnsley this time under Ish well, Ishmael hadn't even come in as the manager then. Yeah. Um but between Ishmael and, and, and Matty, you know, Matty on the pitch, Ishmael off the pitch, they've gone on there and he's galvanized a young a very young side together. Um but his loan at um, at Barnsley ended um on the 1st of January. Yeah. So he has to go back to Leicester City and there was, there was there's other clubs queuing up for yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, so the, the, the Coventry City situation with Mark Robbins yeah. came about. Seemed to happen very quickly. Because very, very they were quickly. Because they were queuing up for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, well, without doubt, they were queuing up for him. And, uh, you know, Mark, he spoke to Mark Robbins and uh, Mark Robbins has footballing principles. He likes to get the ball down. He plays a certain way, which will be brilliant from Matty because that's what Matty's about. Matty's a footballer. Yeah. And what people don't what people don't understand with Matt, if you understand the game, all the people in the game will understand this, right? But your everyday supporter possibly, and I'm not being belittling anybody here when they say this, but some games you can watch Matty and you'll think, well he might not have touched the ball a lot, but do you know what he does? Which is intelligent. He reads the game and what he does he kind of, he's always seems to be in the right place yeah. at the right time. He can stop he situations from happening. Passing channels off. Yeah. He stops it where they're checking and going somewhere else, and then he mm. he, he goes and moves again. He cuts it off. Yeah. But then when he's on the ball, his range of passing. I've said it. You know, listen. Vardy loves that early ball in behind that he can get in and he can get on the end of. Yeah. Matt, he gives you that all day long. Yeah. You get me. Well, he so, goes on to say. He goes on to say. Uh, we know he brought a lot of calm to the team, but the young guys learnt very well, uh, learnt very well from him. We have many uh, options as well, but just saying that he was a calming influence, and uh, he was very good for them, for them yeah. young lads. Yeah. But he'll do great at, oh, at he'll commentary do, he'll, as well. He'll do good. I mean, and, and then obviously who knows what's going to happen at, uh, when he got. I mean, it's still the end of the season. Yeah. Who knows where he's going to, you know, where he's going to go. But the one thing that, that why is what I'm trying to get to why is he's, he's kind of. Taken the option of going out on what he is, is, is obviously where Leicester are playing at the minute, yeah. his game time would be limited. Yeah. Um, and he knew that. And, and Brendan, it's not the same Brendan's playing under twenty threes football. Is no, it? and he wanted to go out and prove his fitness, and he needed them games. So he's gone out there, and he's he, he's obviously proving his fitness, and he's he's just he's just loving his football again. Now he's back on it. He's like a a young spring chicken. You know, he's loving it. Yeah. And uh, long may it continue. The past is the past. Yeah. And of course, if he's playing football, if he's playing football, you know, if Brendan was to call him back, because he's got the game time already, he's ready to hit the ground running. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And Brendan likes him. I mean, yeah. they all like it. Listen, you know, it goes, you know, less, I can't speak highly enough for Leicester City as a fo I mean, you know, Nigel Pearson were one who we played under. Yeah. And I'd like to, I mean, Nigel's gone through a, you, you know, he's been, he's been ill himself. Uh, a few months ago, and, and obviously if he's back on track. I think he's going to be on. Uh, I'm not sure if he's not on the in, in one of the panels this weekend uh, with the FA Cup games. Right. But we'd like to see Nigel back in the game because he's yeah. an astute coach and manager himself, yeah. and he and, and Nigel's got a lot of, you know, the, the respect because he's. A, I'm not just saying this as a Bay Cup lad. He is. Look, he's been brought up right. He's like yeah. his, he's yeah. like his brother mm. Reese. They've been brought up. The principles right. are there, and the values. Everything's there, 
the top pros. Yeah. The top pros. Mm. You, you, you know, the, there, there are good people, out, good players out there, but they're, you know, yeah. they're running a, th a, a fine, fine line, line. On, on, on their, kind of the other side, the yeah. discipline. Well, or there's other discipline. pros who are exactly the same on the pitch as yeah. they are off the pitch. I, I, I take it, you know, because there's two brothers, I keep, I, I'm going to warm this to the yeah. Nevilles. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. In all fairness, whether you like it or you don't like it, the two Nevilles... Yeah, were exactly the... Uh, the upbringing yeah. and everything, the principles were right. Yeah, with the dad, Neville, Neville and... Exactly. The family. And, I, and I look at that with the Jameses. I, I mm. think the, these two, the principles, everything, and the top pros, both of them. But yeah. Matty, you know, good luck at, at coming for City. Yeah, we'll keep you posted on, on that in the, uh, in the coming weeks. We're going to talk now. It's FA Cup weekend, Brent. Exciting times and... Some of our non-league uh, companions or what well, counterparts are uh, are in action. Well, yeah, it's good. I mean, uh, you know what they did this year. You know, with the FA Cup, I have a bit of a, a thing about the FA Cup because uh, it's usually it's usually a lottery how you get in the FA. Not for the teams who are still left in it, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You're, I know what you're, you're higher up yeah. the pyramid. But teams at, at, at five and six yeah. are basically six. You've got to go in the draw. You know, well, we went in a draw when this year. When was the last time we played in, we went in FA Cup? Well, they don't usually put it in a draw. Let me tell you, <laughs> they don't usually put it in a draw. It's usually done on a points per game basis and where you finish in the in the, in the the leagues because they always say they're yeah. oversubscribed. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, and I've, I've banged the drum about this for a long time, the FA Cup, they keep saying it's the, it's the, it's the People's Cup. You know, these are... You know, it's no wonder that all there's loads of televised games this weekend for the FA Cup on different channels, yeah. right? Loads of games, great for football, great for everything. But it's the people's competition. Now, for me, what do we want to see? Like Charlie playing Derby, brilliant. Marine playing. We want to see the romance so of the We want cup. to see it. But the thing is, clubs down here really don't get that, that chance. No. And I'm a firm... Advocate, and I've spoke to people who like the FA fact file people who are behind that and the FA don't really try and they don't really acknowledge them and they should do. My, we've all agreed that they should, uh, every club in the, in the level that step all the way through the pyramid, if we're in the pyramid, should all be here, have a chance in the FA Cup yeah. and should all be here. Not cutting it off because we're oversubscribed. Don't get me on that one because there's certain teams that get in and they haven't even got their own pictures. Yeah, the yeah. ground sharing. Yeah, yeah. You follow me? Yeah. So all this oversubscribing business. The day that the FA brought that in about oversubscribing, uh, about the never used to be oversubscribed. No. But it's obvious when when you're doubling when up. A, when a, when a club starts up and they haven't got the their the own facility, yeah. their infrastructure haven't got their own facilities, right? And they go on grand share with another club. That means you're obviously going to be starting to be oversubscribed and because it causes a lot a problem. of starts to cause a problem, and it's caused a problem because certain clubs then get don't don't get in, yeah. and I think everybody should get in. Now, unfortunately, we've not got in for the last few seasons. But this season, I thought we'd have a chance when it were a draw because <laughs> they, they actually because of COVID, yeah, they made it a draw. Yeah, they couldn't even get in on the draw. <laughs> Can't even win a can't play. even win a raffle. Can't even win a raffle. Can't, <laughs> can't even get in. So you know it's bonkers, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's mad. Silly. But you know what? You know, uh, we'll start with the marine story. Absolute class. Fantastic. And you know what? It's what dreams are made of. Do you know what? You you look at that video and everything that they put on about the history of marine. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've known when I was growing up and there were. You, you know, like a, a ball boy at, at, at Rosendale United. I always knew about Marine because it, it, it was the old Cheshire League. Many mm. years ago, they played in the Cheshire League and Rosendale played Marine. So I remember going to Marine's ground, you know, and they're, they're always like a, a well-respected, famous... Yeah. I mean, it's a three-sided yeah. ground, isn't it? It's a three-sided yeah, yeah, yeah. ground, yeah. is Marine. But you know what? What they've done this time, it's been a bit of a shame for him in, in some ways because they can't get fans in and they've yeah. obviously got Jose Mourinho on and his Tottenham Hotspur team going there but they did this they come up with this idea a virtual kind of uh, raffle crowd or whatever it was well it's a, a virtual well, raffle yeah. now, I, I, I actually because uh, you, you know again as I'm a, I bought a ticket I bought one so yeah. I'm in the draw. You're in the draw. I might win that what, one. I'm gonna say I couldn't win the FA Cup. <laughs> well, I might win that. What's what surprises? I think one of them were. Uh, I think you got. Uh, 
he got to stay in an hotel in uh, for four, I think, in uh, in Liverpool, and then you went to a marine game. I think that were one of them. You went, and another one where you could manage the team in a pre-season friendly. Yeah, get in the dugout. Yeah, you manage the team and uh, and that. I think that were another prize. But you know, whoever thought that up was they were on the money. Yeah. In a lot of ways, because you know what, as well, and credit to the Tottenham Hotspur fans, they bought into it as well. Yeah, they have. They bought in. Which and, is, and, uh, and I think they sold something like, what were it? For, uh, well, I, I saw one point, I think 4,600. Around, around the 5,000. 5,000. Now, at £10 a, a time, you, you, you know what I mean? That's, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's great. And then, obviously, the television money. And, 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 and let's, not forget, let's not forget about Jamie Carragher. I think Jamie, they lost a sponsor. Ah, yeah, yeah. And Jamie Carragher, I uh, don't know the ins and outs of it, but Jamie, you know, he, 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 he's, he's actually replace that sponsor yeah. so again it's all good it's all fair it's a community it's coming together isn't it yeah it is it is and you know what yeah. and now they sell, <laughs> we're, you know, we're, they've got the scarves they've got win. the programs they've got the uh, now Cummings t-shirts six foot window flags on sale they're really embracing oh, it aren't it's, they it's good it's good, good. it is good it is but good. it's an opportunity for the club to earn enough money which will see them go forward for the next five and ten years yeah. You know, because these opportunities don't come around that no, often, yeah. do they? No. And just think. And, and just no think, one well, we, don't we don't know what's happening with the season yet, do we? But just think. What about if they did it? Josie will be in the same change room as what we're in <laughs> when we go and play <laughs> AFC Liverpool. Hey, what, about it, what about if they did it, though? <laughs> what about if they will? <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> what about if they will? Yeah, it can happen. Oh. Without doubt, you know. Listen, yeah. you just got to keep that song of it uh, quiet and yeah, and belief. Yeah, have the belief. Uh, Chola, another one who've you know had some good results. That result to, away at Peterborough, and now uh, a massive game against uh, Wayne Rooney and Derby County. Yeah, that's slightly. It's slightly. That's another. That were another good draw when it it came out, but it's it's kind of got watered down a little bit, and it because of COVID. Because it seems like the entire first team squad, of um, you know, they're isolating because somebody's uh, uh, proved positive with the COVID. Um, so rather than, from what I'm led to believe, rather than risk their place in the in the competition, they're going to still play the game, and uh, but obviously with a probably a, an under twenty three team. That's yeah. going to go there. Now, this is me being a bit cynical here. On one hand, I think you know, from a business uh, and a club point of view, it's a wise thing to do. But are they doing? Are they doing it by being a little bit disrespectful in terms of, you know, are they doing it because they yeah. think our twenty threes will beat them anyway? Yeah, and saving them, saving the, uh, the no, first, no, no, yeah. no, no, they won't be can't be saving no. them because they're on they're on COVID. Right. But what I'm saying is, like everybody else is on COVID. So I think the Southampton games have got a bit of a problem with Shrewsbury. Yeah. But they haven't, they're not sending no youth teams or, or anything. They, they, they've got to go to the FA and hope that the yeah. FA will still keep them in the competition yeah. and they'll rearrange the game, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Right? But that's a gamble because the FA might say, no, well, no, you've got to, unfortunately, we'll have to just take you out of the tie and you've got to sacrifice it that rank, right, yeah. that's it. But with what I'm saying is, with Derby, they haven't, they haven't done that, have they? They've like got thought about it and thought, we're going to play the game anyway. We're going to play the game anyway. But are they doing it because, are they doing that because... Thinking, well, we don't, not, we don't have to wait because we can, we can send an under 23s up and the they'll beat Charlie anyway. anyway. <laughs> don't expect, don't expect that to happen. I'm thinking, <laughs> uh, and they might get a rude awakening. I think, I don't Jay, think, I think Jamie's got other, uh, other ideas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what they might be thinking. Yeah. You know, I were 23s and still beat them anyway. Yeah. I'm hoping it's not that, Sarah, the thinking. But, but uh, if it is, it's a big mistake. They'll get, they'll get a rude awakening. But good luck to them. Yeah, anyway, good luck great. And I uh, see the... Uh, They've been getting the beer uh, sorted as well. People can buy beer, uh, branded beer, which is which is great for the. Well, well they've got. Uh, yeah. uh, listen, there's a, there's a lot of people that that we know that are close to Charlie, 
you know, Ben K, the groundsman. Yeah, he's been he's been you know, working really hard over this last you know, uh, we know ben, couple of weeks. You know, from his time at Ashton. TV trucks Ashton, have arrived Ashton, already. Ashton, Ashton Athletic. Right, yeah. Ben. And then obviously, you know, I go back a long way with the chairman. Um, 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 the, the, the chairman was, uh, you know, he's been there for quite a few years, but he reconnected with Ken Wright. Ken Wright's the chairman. I'm, I'm sure Ken yeah. is still the chairman. And of course, Ken was there. He was there from uh, their, uh, Ori well, they were at Orich RMI, and he's been, you know, he's been around the game a long time. And then yeah. they've got an experienced man in our friend Terry Robinson, mm -hmm. you know, so. And they've got some experience on the park. You, you, you talked about Jamie Vrim. Uh, Vrim Mer. How do you pronounce his name? I don't know. I didn't even. I didn't no, even no, say. you were frightened, weren't you? Yeah, he's a school teacher. Sorry, 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 Jamie. He likes to dance as well, doesn't he? He likes to dance. Listen. Sorry, Jamie, if I get this wrong. Jeremy Vermilligalor. Ver, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry if I've got it wrong. But they've also got an experience as director of football, mm -hmm. Andy Priest. Yes, yeah. So they've got experience there. They've got yeah. experienced people at the club, experienced around the club. It's a good club, and it's 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 a, it's a good club, and uh, and we all we know we yeah, all just uh, show this to the camera. There's the uh, the Magpie beer, Mag Mag Pie IPA or whatever it is. I think it is. Right. But uh, got the uh, own beer going. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So so you know it's exciting, really it is, exciting. It is, and uh, and and. Uh, Hopefully they'll clear the throats and hopefully we'll hear them singing that Adele song at the end of the... Uh, yeah. You know, oh, that was the uh, end of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Peterborough game they played. Yeah, that yeah. seems to be their uh, adopted song. Yeah, it does. So. Who else is playing? You've brought a couple of non-league uh, clubs down there who are going to be in action. Well, Boreham Wood are playing. That's a local derby to me. Boreham Wood and, uh, and Millwall. Millwall, yeah. Down, uh, down south. Stockport. Crawley are playing Leeds. Oh, yeah. It's a good, uh, um, good game for them. And we've got Chelsea and Morecambe. That's Chelsea another one. Morecambe. Morecambe. Yeah. You know, all good on. Good old Morecambe. That's, the a, that's, a, that's another good... Uh, that'll help. Uh, Morecambe have had the, 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 the bad financial yeah. times uh, over over time. You know, a over few seasons ago, years. they were... But, you know, this will help them. And Chelsea are one of them teams. I mean, they've got a lot of talent there. and they're uh, But they're, they, can, they can be a bit hit and miss. Yeah. You know they won't like it up, huh? Well, the unfortunate thing is it's down at the bridge, isn't it? It's not at Markham, and it'd been better if it were the other way around. Yeah. But and then we've got another good uh, good tie. Is it on Monday? Stockport County v West. Now Stockport seem like they're a team on their way back now. I tell you what, that could be a potential banana skin for West Ham that game. Well, it could. I mean, it's at Stockport, and uh, they've got some decent. No, it's the part. It's. Could be a uh, yeah, and they've got uh, you know the, the the new chairman there uh, seems to be uh, ambitious and wants to get them in the football league and you know they seem to be and then they've got an experience a long uh, manager that's been there for quite some time Jim Gallon yeah Jim Gallon yeah. so brilliant you know we wish brilliant. all the we do. the, the non-league teams that have are, uh, are are in the FA Cup this weekend all the nothing but the best yeah uh, final story I want to pick up on before we uh, finish Brent. Uh, Graham Alexander, excellent news, new manager at Motherwell. Yeah, I mean, I were, deserves I, it. I was shocked. I was shocked when he, uh, when he, he lost his position. Were. We don't know what, listen, you don't know what goes on. Yeah. You, you know, I'm not... I'm, it it you certainly know, wasn't it's results, was it? Well, you, you hear all sorts and uh, you hear all sorts of things and I don't know whether it's true or it's not true, but one of the, one of the, one of the scenarios that came to my, what come to me was, they weren't good to watch. They wasn't right. exciting. Now this is my point. Expansive like Leeds United, but get walloped every week. Well, well this is my point. We, you, you, when I hear things like that, what, if that's, what, if that's you correct. Cake, what do you want, your cake and eat it? Well, if that's correct, I, I, I don't get it because at the end of the day, people say it's a result business and you're there to get results and we're yeah. there to get promotion. And if you watch the, the episode what Sky have been showing about uh, 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 Salford, and they're in the the point in the boardroom where uh, Gary Neville is, you know, he's going on with it, you know, he's cost, you know, we're 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 pushing the boat out for these players, and he's got to get the results, and we've got to do that, and it's costing us this for that. We need to be getting promotion. We've got to get promotion. I get that. Yeah. And then on the on the next hand, 
the manager who we, who we were the manager then is the manager what I'm talking about now he's gone out and he set a team up not to be beat and they've been getting results and they've been there hovering around the playoffs but from not, the start of the but season but it's not attractive but it weren't attractive but it's got results and then since then since they've, 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 they've parked I mean I might be wrong on what I'm saying yeah but it's just uh... but, but it's what I've been told but then when he's parted company and they brought another manager in, the, the results have been like up and down. Yeah. A bit like Marshall's performance. <laughs> but probably more down than up. A bit like Lady Godiva's knickers. <laughs> up and down. <laughs> oh, well, that's another one. But you get me. Yeah. I don't understand it, me, because, y you know, yeah. would, would they say the same about, you know, I mean, Sean Dyche, we're going to talk about Sean Dyche at Burnley. It's not exciting to watch Burnley, but he keeps them in the Premier League. On a on a yeah. small budget, yeah. and Burnley fans are happy with that. They want to because see the that's the only way we're going to stay so, in the Premier so League. Survive. No, you cut your cloth you, and you play to your strengths. Yeah, maybe that might change now with new investors coming, but we'll see. Yeah, well, yeah, great great news as well for Burnley with the uh, with the the American owners, you know, taking charge. I were asking the question where have they got the money from, and you turned around to me and said. None of your bloody business. Well, it isn't, is it? It's not a supporters' <laughs> business. What well, no. difference does it make? It's a business. Yeah. Well, they, they paid, they bought yeah. a business. I, yeah. I asked the question, take football out of the scenario, if the guy buys a blinking uh, uh, steel manufacturing business down the road from where you live, would you be questioning where he's getting his money from no, to buy it? No. Well, it's the same in football. No, you were right what you were saying, and uh, he has come out and... Uh, you know, said that the where the where the funds had come from, and uh, I wish I listen, think it, I think it's I think listen, it's good. Listen seriously, and um, I'm, I'm joking. As long as the, as long as it's clean money, yeah. does it matter where it's come from? None at all. As long as it's clean money, mm. that's it. Excellent. Anything else on your piece of paper you want to uh, just have a little chat about before we uh, call it a day? No, just one thing I'd say because oh. the American owners, the thing you know about Burnley now will be. A, Miss American Pie, won't it? What? My, <laughs> what, like, uh, what's it called? My, my, my Mr. American, American Pie. Oh, the chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. The good, good old boys sticking whiskey and that, singing, This'll be the day that I die. This'll be the day that I die. It all together now. So bye. This will be the day that I die.